Hugs for Ida, everybody. She's taking this pretty damn hard. All right, Master of Friendship. What shall we do now? Okay. All right. Okay, I don't think anyone has anything different to say. All right. So one thing I really wish that had happened at Belzar's Wall, and I couldn't get into it last time, just for moments of time. One thing I really wanted, and this is something I want for him going forward. For once, I want Elphinon to just fucking lose it on somebody. Like, even just temporarily. Like, he's, he, he, he's, he's always been very even-tempered diplomat, and any time he does actually temporarily get overly emotional in one direction or the other, he pretty much almost immediately calms down by himself. And I really actually wanted him there to actually start realizing that, no, you can't talk your way out of every situation. Sometimes, yes, you do need to immediately resort to force. You know, you have to recognize that sometimes a situation is utterly hopeless and the only thing you can do is, is, is just damage control. And sometimes, yeah, that means immediately just going up and just punching somebody in the fucking face. And I really hoped he had done, he would have done that to Ilbert there. But alas, no. Like, you would think at that point he would recognize, yeah, the situation is utterly hopeless and, like, you can't talk him down. And I need, I want him to realize that, that you, you just can't talk absolutely everybody down. It's, it's just not possible. You, you, you literally cannot save everybody. So, it's a little bit upset about that, but... That lovely scene is why they had to leave Elise behind here. Because, frankly, bringing her along would have been just too complicated because then you'd have to explain what she knows or how much she didn't know, and if she didn't know, then it would have to be... Okay, no, you have any different dialogue? Okay. Um... You basically have to have an exposition up of either what she knows or filling her in, and frankly, that would have just been a break to the flow of the narrative, and it, it was just way easier to leave her behind. It, as annoying as it was to see her left behind just after she was reintroduced, in this case, I can actually completely understand why they did it. It, it, it just made telling everything a whole lot more smoother. Yeah, that kind of sucked. Or actually, when the hell did you get here? I mean, assuming we called you along the way, but... Exa yeah, that, that, yeah, that's what I was saying. No mortal, but we've known people who are immortal. I love this. Yeah, it was probably an ASEAN, but whatever. Whatever. We can just totally dodge that aside. Okay, that sounds like a good idea, I guess. Alright, alright, alright. I'll forgive you for putting the ASEAN plotline partial thing on a little bit of back burner. I still think it's a line of thought worth actually discussing. Oh, snap! Okay, well, I, 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 I get that this situation is far from over, but can't we have just a hug and a quick cry or something? Yeah, but no, we can have a quick hug and a quick cry just to let it out briefly and then kind of refocus our efforts. It's okay to do that. It is okay to grieve. I think it's actually doing 
not, again, not that I did, not that I really disagree with them actually being like, okay, yeah, we've been bought some time, but we don't know how much. We 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 can't just sit around on our asses just waiting for things to happen. I completely understand that, but at the same time, are we not squandering him as a friend and a comrade by just being like, oh, Papa Limo is gone now. Guess it's back to usual business. I, I find that attitude just as kind of shitty. I, I can understand it, but come on. No, no, no. Tataro, you're staying here, so you cry for us all. I don't think anyone else has anything interesting to say. Nope, not they do. See, all right. See, somebody's crying. All right, all right. Group hug, you guys. I say y'all get in a huddle and y'all cry in front of everybody. I'm voting on that. Homie, you really need your friend back. I'm still telling you, go get a deck of cards, go get in this sick bin, and play some poker. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. They split the patch, and I've literally been here five minutes, but... Yeah. Well, you know how time flows in this universe. Oh, well, that was fast. What, 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 we having another meeting? No, oh, well, okay, that was fast. Damn, you, you guys did not, did, did not dick around with, uh, yeah, spreading words and trying to figure out what's going on. Kudos on you. Kudos on you. Yeah, I know, it's, it, it's a result of where they, they split this final patch in half, and this is now the second part of it, and... In real time, stuff has passed, and they need to remind you of everything. But shh. <laughs> we're, we're we're just gonna pretend that everything's all hunky dory, and everyone's just working really fast. It's good to see for once, pe like pe we all had a fire lit under our asses and got shit done. We're gonna pretend that. Uh, hi. A word, if you would, good sir. This place, it is within the realm of Eorzea. You're an odd-looking fellow, aren't you? Still, <laughs> takes all sorts, I suppose. Uh, this here's Vespa Bay. Thanalan's door to the ocean, as some folk like to call it. Okay, but that didn't actually answer his question. Uh, personal space. Am I to understand from your answer that I have indeed arrived in Eorzea? Eh? Yes. You're in Eorzea? <laughs> oh my god, I feel so bad for this poor guy. Ah! A plain response at last, and the one I wanted at that. My journey was not without its hardships, and I would sooner travel by land than put to sea again. <laughs> you do not believe that so small a bar could bear me across the ocean? Such timid little sailors. I had but to set my course and set my jaw till I made port. <laughs> okay, these people here are gonna think you're absolutely crazy. Though... It would perhaps have been wise to lay down my oars a moment to sup on more than the spray of brine water. By the trembling of my limbs, I sense a brief repast may be in order. Oh, somebody get him a burger. Nay, I will not hearken to the feeble grumblings of an empty belly. 
Duty comes before all. Man, are you all right? Everyone's probably like, what the hell am I witnessing? Thou art far indeed from home, friend. Uh, would somebody get a medic? And perhaps a cheeseburger. Kicking me out of the rising stones, are we? Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Fire under my ass. I totally get it. Fine. Right, we'll meet with the Alliance. We'll talk about what needs to be done. Everyone's report. And hopefully we'll have time to go back and give Edith some hugs. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, hey, you guys came with me. Cool. Dear friends, pray accept my heartfelt thanks for your efforts in defense of Gridania's borders. I would fain dwell longer on my gratitude for the support of the Alliance, but the situation at Belsar's Wall demands that we forego such pleasantries. Oh good, so let's dispense with the smarm and get in the meat and potatoes. According to our most recent intelligence, the cocoon of light that formed in the air above the wall remains undimmed and unbroken. After measuring the cocoon's etheric concentrations, Archon Yishtola has confirmed the presence of a primal entity. Okay, might have been nice for her to call us, but... <laughs> so we must assume that Ilbert's thrice damned god is indeed trapped within. And what news of the Imperials? They're not like to ignore such a spectacle. Sir, a Galian airship was observed making an approach, but the vessel was destroyed when it drew near. The Empire appears to have made no subsequent attempts to reach the object. Ah, okay, well that's interesting. The soldiers who witnessed the incident spoke of a lance of light issuing from within the cocoon of an entire warship being reduced to smoking ruin in the space of a moment. Okay, so yeah, what do we do about that thing then? Veterans of Cartano, meanwhile, likened the destruction to that wrought by the fiery wrath of Bahamut. We could face another calamity. So the Primal is awake, then? Contained, yes, but for how long? We must destroy it now, lest it break free. Yeah, but do you have any ideas how the hell we're going to do that? Agreed. There is, however, the small matter of how to get close enough to a being that swats warships from the sky as you would a bothersome gnat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not liking the looks of, of sending me alone in here. I know it's kind of my day job, but... Um, um, yeah, the... I, I don't think I'm OSHA certified for this kind of work. I like to imagine they're all just sitting here waiting for me to just volunteer. <laughs> Is this truly so complex a puzzle? Or have you no stomach for the obvious solution? Mira, what the hell are you doing here? How the hell did you get here? What in the hells are you doing here? A pleasure to see you too, Garland. Now, if you'd be so kind as to explain to these good people why you should be begging me for my assistance, that would be most appreciated. Sir? 
Who is this man? Oh, how terrifically rude of me. Nero Tolskeva, former Tribunus of the 14th Legion of the Garlean Empire. These days, however, one might say that I'm something of a free agent. What do you want, Nero? I was getting to that. Although you already know what I'm about to propose, old friend. Ah? As you have rather belatedly realised, within that frail binding lurks an entity alike in strength to the great Bahamut, and the only force in existence which might conceivably contend with such a foe is the very creation which captured the Elder Primal in the first place. I speak, of course, of Omega. Cue incoming gas from everybody! Omega? That Hulk has been gathering dust beneath the plains of Cartanau since the Allegans breathed the last. And none alive knows how to wake it. Well, maybe you all haven't tried because you didn't dig it out yet. I'm sorry. Do you understand who it is with whom you have the privilege of speaking? I'm Nero Tolskeva, Master Engineer. The mechanical genius who restored the Ultima weapon to full operational capacity. Uh, uh, Nero, are you really sure you should be bragging about this kind of stuff against people who, you know, kind of hate the Empire? Like, I know you're not working for them anymore, but... <laughs> they probably want to punch you in the face right about now. And as luck would have it, I am graciously offering you the use of my considerable expertise. All right, what do you want for it? And what, you just expect us to accept? You're a fool if you think your deeds at the Crystal Tower are enough to win my trust, Nero. Trust? You wound me, Garland. All those years studying side by side at the Academy, sharing both trial and triumph, we were countrymen once, you and I. But sentiment aside, have you a better solution? Or do you mean to send in your vaunted hero there, as you always do, and pray the world is not engulfed in flame? Well, Jackass has got a good point here. Let us approach the problem in a rational manner. Does not the fact that Omega slumbers in stasis point to the existence of some overriding technology? A means of control? I would ask a question, if I may. Nero, was it not? In the event that we succeeded in using Omega to shackle the Primal in the manner you propose, what then would become of it? Do we not risk repeating the mistakes of the Alagans? Uh, I repeat. Do you have any better ideas? This is a question worth asking, but... Means of control. Wake it up. Put it back to sleep. Something. Anything. Omega is but a tool. How we choose to employ that tool is entirely up to us. Of course, if you would rather leave it buried beneath Cartano while you continue your petty squabbles above, then I suppose that is also your choice. Spare us, Nero. The Seed Seer's concern is a valid one. He who controls Omega wields the power of the gods, the very power which led the Alagans to destroy themselves. And does it not fall to we engineers to prevent such misuse? What was your company's proud slogan? Freedom through technology? Oh, snap, he got you there, son! <laughs> A creed you follow, is it? What say you? Do we take this villain at his word? Uh, uh, he, he, he's got a point, alright? Alright, I honestly, I get nothing better. The rest of y'all got nothing better. And for once, even though it's to further his own goals, I have somebody jumping into my defense about, yeah, hey, maybe you should not actually keep relying on the warrior light to complete all this shit for you. 
So until we come up with a better idea, I'm on Team Nero. He makes me grind my teeth is what he does. But I suppose we don't have much of a choice. I don't think you're intimidating him at all, Sid. Would the Council be willing to entrust this matter to a pair of former Imperials? Yes. The task of restoring the Alagan relic will be yours. But the responsibility for its reawakening must remain with the Council. Do we condone this course of action? Aye. It would seem we do. Let the record show that we invest this contingent with the authority to enter Cartanau and take command of Omega. Oh, I would think you guys would have put up a more fight on this. Sid, I appoint you leader of the expedition. Science, I would ask that you assign some few of your number to escort Master Garland and supervise the other one. We should be happy to oblige. The politics of Cardinal being what they are, I dare say our neutrality will prove useful in avoiding any unnecessary entanglements. If I am not mistaken, Doma occupies a similarly neutral position. Might we not persuade you to join the expedition, Lady Yugiri? If you suspected any foul play from Nero, you would be welcome to kill him. Oh, gee, yeah, she is not screwing around here. Yeah, yeah, if he's strange, just kill him. Not, like, imprison him or subdue him. Just fucking murder his ass. Oh, <laughs> look, at, look at Nero's reaction. He's like, what? My blade is yours. Oh, she got her eye on you, bud. Not a moment's hesitation, eh? You'll forgive me if I do not shake your hand. Well, seeing where we have somebody new. Well, I, can't, I wouldn't call him a friend yet, but. Temporary friend, I guess. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really matter how the hell Nero learned of it, because he's there. Crisis is averted. And honestly, I'm not really actually that upset with how he actually learned of the meeting and was able to get in. Well, he is a genius. He's very resourceful. And there's a, there's a couple other reasons I'll get into later that, that might that might just kind of help put it all together. But I'm actually not a little upset. I'm not really upset that such a lack of detail exists. Because I, I just fucking love Nero, and it's something that just, just keeps the narrative moving faster. And I, But I do like that people are like, how the fuck did he get in there? So at least they're they're, they're acknowledging it and lampshading on it a bit. So, so I, I can kind of forgive it on that front. But that's going to be all for now, friends. What are we going to do at Cartano? Can Nero be trusted? Are you going to be able to keep an eye on him? Are we going to have to subdue him in a mortal such manner? I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out next time. Thank you for watching, my friends.